Well, Roddy, I have not seen you since Dallas about five years ago when you did Charlie's Aunt. Right. And that was such a fun, fun evening of theater. That's nice. I, I, I'm glad you feel that way about it because it, it was a, a great joy to play that part before I curled at the edges and couldn't play it anymore. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I really had wanted to play it a lot and there's a certain age at which I think one cannot play it anymore and I just made it in under the, under the line, I think. Well, forever <laughs> young Roddy McDowell, you know. <laughs> well, there's a certain point where you can't hop around that way anymore. <laughs> Roddy, in this movie, Evil Under the Sun, Agatha Christie Mystery, you are playing a gossip columnist. And you do it, I must say, with great flair, and you make it really fun. But I wonder, did you pattern it after any gossip columnist you might know? No, I patterned it after... Uh, uh, it, the film takes place in the 30s, and I patterned the character after... Um, a, a whole group of, of creatures of that period who were um, considered, what well, weren't considered, were extremely volatile and uh, successful and other people imitated in their lives if they wished to be chic. Uh, people like uh, uh, Walter Luther Bankhead and Noel Coward and uh, uh, the, the, the people of no talent would suddenly think uh, that by imitating them that they would be then successful. That was really the basis of, uh, of my approach to the role. It wasn't, I didn't base it on any columnist I'd, I'd, I'd ever met or ever knew about, and I don't think there was anybody ever uh, that bizarre <laughs> as the, <laughs> the character depicted in Evil Under the Sun. That's one of the, uh, one of the great enjoyments about working in, in material like Agatha Christie. The creatures are, they're uh, excessive. In a sense, and they're, they're, they're fun to, to play. It must have been also fun because you filmed this at Mallorca. Mm. And was it like a, a big vacation for everybody, or did you have some troubles that aren't apparent on the screen? Oh, well, yes. All, all, uh, it's wonderful when uh, the, the end product looks to be effortless, because it should, because that's, uh, then it be is, uh, that's the task at hand. But making a film is always very difficult. I mean, uh, the, just the weather conditions alone, if the, the choppy seas, bad weather, uh, changing locations. The wonderful thing is that the gr group of actors involved are all so highly professional and um, stunning performers and lovely people. So uh, there wasn't any static or difficulty in that way. And the management, uh, among the most elegant for whom one could work. So. Uh, it was a very happy experience to do with, uh, in, in that sense. But films are always very difficult to make. They're not easy to do. I don't know, I don't know of uh, a movie that uh, is actually easy to make. It's hard, hard work. I wonder also, um, we're coming close now to the Academy Awards, and the nominations have been announced. And uh, what, what do you think? If you're, are you making any bets about what will be best picture and who will be best? No, I haven't seen all the films and, and uh, uh, I don't really go, uh, I don't think there is really a best. I mean, it, it's, um, it's a great game and great fun and, and uh, uh, but I don't really think about it in those times. I haven't seen all the movies. For instance, I haven't, I want to very much see Red, so I haven't seen that yet. Uh, uh, Have you seen On Golden Pond? Oh, it's lovely. And uh, uh, what are the other films nominated? Uh, uh, Reds, uh, Golden Pond, Chariots of Fire. A oh, beautiful film. Yes, beautiful yes. movie. Uh, I forget what else is nominated. Uh, I just heard about it yesterday, so I, and uh, so I haven't. It hasn't really all sunk in. But I haven't seen all all the movies, and I do think that before one votes, they should see all the product. Are you a voting member of the Academy? Yes, I am, but if I haven't seen it all, I don't think one should vote, you know, I don't think it's fair. Well, yeah. you're, I, I imagine you are uh, sort of a minority in that, because I think lots of people vote on films they, they have not seen, and I guess that's all right, if that's <laughs> what they want to do. Yeah. Another question, do you feel that in your career, Roddy, you have been treated fairly by gossip columnists or not. I don't read a lot of it, so uh, I, I wouldn't know. I mean, <laughs> it's better not to read um, uh, gossip, I think. In other... It, 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 gossip in other... An interview is an interview. Gossip is gossip, and, and I, I, gossip becomes uh, disturbing. I mean, 
Pro you mean you don't read any of those columns con. like Liz Smith or... No. Or you don't read them? No. How can you discipline yourself not to? Because I think most people read them and say, oh, I don't believe them, but they sure read them. No, I don't. That's incredible. I uh, did you, did think you it never? Saves a lot, uh, I think it saves a lot of, of uh, disturbance. I mean, one is bound to be disturbed if you, uh, if you read something that you find to be uh, 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 not so. It's got to disturb you. Of course, a lot of interviews can sometimes can be written, you know. Yes, that's and that's that's disturbing if uh, something out of context uh, uh, that one hasn't meant uh, to to be the way. It's, it's why into, it's why your task is is so difficult because uh, uh, you have to remember so much, you know, if you're writing something down and it can come out entirely different uh, than uh, it is meant. It's a very very difficult profession. I but think. you see, on television, you're really a lot safer. Yes. Because yes. whatever you say is what's going on. Yes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you can only do yourself in. I can't That's do right. you. In. That's right. So what is next now for Roddy McDowell? I've just finished a, a television film uh, a few days ago, and I don't know what I, I'm going to be. Uh, what is it? At uh, May West, it's called, with a girl, uh, with a very, very talented girl called Anne Gillian, who is marvelous. And you're playing in that? I'm playing a man from uh, the period around 1910 who uh, influences Mae West uh, in the teleplay uh, about style and, and content. So it's, it's an interesting project. Did you ever know Mae West? Yes, happily. What was she like? Wonderful. A, a, a dear, uh, adorable, funny, um, very enjoyable lady. Outrageous? No. Not outrageous? Not at all. She was uh, uh, very clever about her art form and uh, not outrageous for one second. We'll look forward to that as well. Roddy, very nice to see you again. Don't stay away so long. You're due back in Dallas. Okay, thank you. So let's get a good project going for you. Thank you very much. Something that you, where you won't have to run too much. Oh, okay, very good. <laughs> nice to see you, Roddy. You too. Thank you. Bye.